What car are we in, Joe? We are in the brand new 2024 Hyundai Ioniq 6. This is the limited edition, which is the highest trim you can get for this car. Yeah, and what do we think about the price? The starting price tag of right around $50,000, in my opinion, is a bit steep. Not to be fair, you get a ton of technology, performance, which we're going to go over in today's video. But off the bat, I think it's a hair steep. What do you think? I think so too. There's three trims to the car, the SE, SEL, and then this is the limited. That's correct. So there's three trims. The, the base one starts at 41, and then it goes up to 45 for the middle trim. And this one's sitting at like 50,000. I think, I think there's a lot of tech. There's a lot of good things in this car. Okay. But would I spend $50,000 on a Hyundai or a Hyundai for the people in the comments? I don't know yet. Yeah. I really, really do not know yet. Yeah. So we've had this car for about a week right now. Joe tested it for a couple of days. I'm testing it for a couple of days. There's a lot of things I love about this car and I think they did very well. Yeah. And there's a lot of, no, there's not a lot of things. There's a couple things that I do not like. <laughs> And what do you think? All right, so let's talk about a couple of those things. Let's start off with the exterior. What do you think about the styling of the Ionic 6? So the front of the car, it's, the front of the car is not nice, okay? I'm just gonna say that outright. You think? Yeah, I don't like this front of the car. And I heard someone else say that, you know the old Apple, um, uh, the, the mouse. Apple uh, mouses? Yeah, the magic it mouse. Looks, yeah, the yeah. magic mouse. It looks exactly like that. Really? And once I saw the side profile, I was like, yeah, this is it. <laughs> so the front of the car, I'm not a really big fan of the front of the car. It just looks plain and just like dull. Yeah. But then the back of the, the, back of the car, dude, I think it looks fantastic. The back is money, dude. What do you think of the back? I love the back. A lot of people say it looks like the old school Porsche 911 yeah. type of car. Big time. I think they nailed the back, dude. Yeah. My dad saw the front of the car. He's like, ah, it's all right. Yeah. And then he saw the back of the car. He's like, that is beautiful. Yeah, yeah same, same. And I think with the Ionic 5 and the Ionic 6 right now, and they're coming out, I believe the Ionic 7, yeah. they're going with a lot of these like pixely yeah, design yeah, exactly. on it. Yeah, you can see it all throughout the car, actually. The side mirrors have the blinkers that have the pixels. Uh, the front, the back, so it's it's all over. So you like the back? The back's my favorite part of the car by far. Yeah, me too. The side profile of the car, I think it looks fantastic. It looks good, dude. Once you get to the front of the car, I'm like, yeah, it's, I don't know, it lost me. It definitely uh, drops off the uh, cool factor on the front, in my opinion. But honestly, it grew on me after driving it around for a few days. Big it time. wasn't. It wasn't uh, too bad, so. No, big time. Um, this car, especially with um, the top trim and the middle trim that comes with 20 inch wheels, the, I think they nailed the wheels. Dude, the wheels, I think they did a phenomenal job. Especially us two coming from Model 3s, where yeah. they just have that plastic hubcap. Yeah. On the Ionic 6, they actually built it into the design of the actual wheel. So it's it's blacked out, so you can't see it, yep. but it's functional because yeah. it's aerodynamic. So. Yeah, because there's aero. There's also like little plastic pieces all over the wheel. Yep. Um, it comes with an awesome sunroof. Yeah. Yep. A little small, though. I'm not going to lie. I actually thought the same thing. It would have been nice to have like a panoramic sunroof, like something a little bit bigger. My Hyundai Sonata um, has a panoramic sunroof. I know, and I was thinking about this. Do you think it has to do with the design of like the car, how it slopes down towards the back so they could Maybe. bend it? I think but then the Sonata is kind of the same shape. Yeah, I don't know. I think they could have done a little bit better with the size of the sunroof for sure. Especially for $50,000, I would... I would expect like a panoramic sunroof. The Tesla Model 3 has it. Other yep. cars have it. Yep. So that's just like my only nitpick with the car. Overall, I do like the styling. Yeah, no, I think styling is not in question. I think they did a great job. Um, what do you think about the interior of the car? We've been driving around the past few days. What do you think about the back seats? Let's start there. Okay, so the back seats, especially coming from a Model 3, it's very spacious in the oh, back. Oh, big time. A lot of leg room. I'm about... 5'11", 6 foot um, <laughs> on a good day, and I fit perfectly right behind my driving position. Yep. What about you? Yeah, same. So I'm 5'10", <laughs> and uh, when I sit in the back of my Model 3, the way I drive it, my knees are actually touching the driver's seat, as opposed to the Ionic 6. When I sit in the back, I've got four or five inches between my knees and the driver's seat. Yeah. So I think I've got plenty of space back there, which is nice. Plenty of space in the back, and it's just nice. It's all leather seats. Um, it's ventilated, heated. Yep. Um, the leather is, like, super comfortable. The seats are super comfortable. Yep. Better than Model 3. Yeah, yeah, I think I think comfort-wise, it's definitely better than Model 3. Obviously, being electric as well, I like the missing transmission tunnel, tunnel uh, hump, so you get yeah, that whole... Deal back uh, leg room, so it's kind of nice. Just to finish off the back, it also comes with a 110 volt um, outlet that you can plug in, your computer charger, 
a regular charger or anything. Yeah. I just couldn't get it to work. Yeah, yeah, I was having trouble with that too, actually. It's right down here in the middle of the uh, the bench seat here, but yeah, I couldn't get it to work either. So. I couldn't get it to work, nothing was charging for me, and I just gave up. Yeah. I think there's something with the setting that I have to do, but that was like complicated on yeah, itself, I agree. so. So speaking of design, I think one of the coolest elements of this car is the active air on the front. So it's actually got these flaps that open and close. If it needs to cool off, they open, allowing air to flow to the radiators and cool off. If it doesn't, they close and the car is extremely aerodynamic. What do you think about that feature? Um, I like it. I would have never noticed it unless you actually <laughs> mentioned to me because you can't really see it and yeah. the car doesn't tell you if it's opening or closing. But it's a cool feature. One thing that does scare me is more moving parts on the car, the more likely it's going to break eventually. That's a good point. However, this car has a really, really good warranty. It has 100,000 on the battery. It's up to 60,000 miles for anything that goes on inside and outside of the car to the front of the car it has probably the smallest front yeah, that was ever kind of, made kind of a let down there but uh, i think that was just for the charger honestly there's no way you can store anything besides like an ipad in there or something i literally i put my phone in there because i was like this is probably the only thing that yeah. could like fit you can't put anything else yeah. and the crazy thing about this is this is built on the ionic 5 platform okay yeah. so the ionic 5 ionic 6 use the exact same platform and they designed it from the ground up mm. so they could have put room in there every yeah. other car has it yeah. Yeah. so that's just like the only thing I don't know why they didn't include um, room for that, especially on my Model 3. I use it sometimes with yeah. groceries or something like yeah, that. Big. So um, I thought that should have been a thing, but yeah. it is what it is. It's still a good car. Yeah. Let's switch and let's continue talking about the, let's do it. Getting in the car. All right, so we switched seats. Now I'm driving the Ionic 6. And the first thing you'll notice is you're greeted with a beautiful leather wrapped heated steering wheel, uh, which on a day like today, obviously you don't need, but living in Chicago, that is a must have. Um, another thing that I like about the steering wheel is it's got the paddle shifters. So you downshift, downshift to uh, really engage the regenerative braking, which is pretty cool. Um, it's also got a, we talked about the design element that they have throughout the car, which yeah. is these like little pixels. And it's cool because if you shift between the different drive modes, it actually changes on the wheel, which is pretty cool. So you put in sport, they turn red, normal, white eco green so that's pretty cool and it gives you while you're charging it gives you like progression uh, that is sick i like that um, led lighting so i like that i like that besides that you get your standard stuff the answer the phone change the radio uh lane keep assist and highway assist you said version two yeah um highway driving assist version two nice the, the se model only gets highway driving assist one nice and um yeah that basically just does your keeps you in your lane follows the car in front of you, um, does pretty good turning. Nice, you and said it switches lanes, though. And it switches lanes, just like the Tesla. That's kind of sick. Yeah, it's actually like a really, really cool feature, so. That's pretty sick. Um, another thing that is pretty cool up here is uh, when you change lanes and you give a signal, a camera comes up on the uh, dash yep. showing you if there's a car there, obviously, or not. And um, when you turn, it, the camera uh, cuts off, so it's nice to have that. So another cool thing is, um, Hyundai's got a shift by wire system. Um, so to shift it, you kind of just rotate it the way you want. So forward is drive, middle is neutral, and backwards is reverse. To park it, there's a little button on the end. You hit it and you, you're in park. I haven't had any issues with it. It's been pretty smooth. I kind of like how it looks and how it feels, so. No, it's perfect. And it's like really, really good build quality on it too. Yeah. And I know a lot of like manufacturers are moving away like slowly from even having like a knob to shift. Yep. And they're doing it all digital, but I like the design. It's not in your way. It doesn't hit anything. And I think it's really good. And then the backup camera is pretty good as well. The backup camera is good. And the augmented reality feature, I think, yeah, is pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know until you showed me that. So it's got like a, we'll show you guys, but uh, on the screen, it shows the car like in a virtual world. And as you're driving, it actually shows the car moving there too, which is pretty sick. Yeah, yesterday I was in the drive through and I actually discovered that feature. And I'm like, Huh, I didn't know Hyundai actually <laughs> did this because I just saw it with like BMW, Porsche, yep. and usually the higher end cars. Would I? Is it more of a gimmick? <laughs> yes, because I don't really see myself ever using it. I just need a backup camera and my two mirrors. Yeah, yeah it's more of a gimmick, I feel like, but it's cool to have. It's $50,000. I yeah. think that's like a pretty good uh, tech feature to have. But like, yeah, the build quality of this car is like pretty good from the inside. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I think we were both talking about when we first got in with the ambient lighting things like that it gave us like that uh 
Mercedes Benz S Class. Oh, 100 percent. So. I think you sent me a video when I was out of town actually, and I was like, "Did we get a Mercedes? <laughs> Did we get something cool?" Like, um, no. The inside of the car is very, very good. Exactly what Joe said. There's ambient lighting literally everywhere. Yeah. Um, on the center of the dashboard, um, this green light turns on once you turn off the, on the car. And then there's ambient lighting on the doors from the right to the left door. And then that changes with your drive mode. Yeah. So it can go red, purple, and I'm guessing green, depending on what uh, drive mode you have. And um, yeah, that's really, really good. Uh, when you're Once you're doing the highway driving assist, it shows you everything. And then usually Tesla has all the other cars around you. Yep. This one actually just has blobs. It's like a box. Oh, no yeah, it doesn't really show a car. It just shows blobs <laughs> like around you. It's in a software is, update to come Yeah, in. it's a new software by <laughs> Hyundai, which is like weird. You really couldn't program in like any cars, but it works really, really well. Um, it changes lanes perfectly and all that stuff. Moving to the infotainment system, a couple things that I just noticed is they pretty much use the same software from the EV to their regular um, gas cars. Yeah. Which I don't personally like that. I don't either, and we were talking about this earlier. It would have been, I feel like with the whole shift to EV cars, I feel like manufacturers could have taken advantage of that and kind of rebranded themselves and redone a couple things. Yeah. Like you said, this feels and looks just like your Sonata, which is obviously a, a gas powered car. So one thing that kind of bugged me was with the key fob, you can hold down the button to open the trunk. It's powered, which is nice. But to close the trunk, you can't close it with the key fob, which you think you'd be able to. Yeah, it's does, powered. That, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't it do it? But it doesn't. So you have to manually go to the back of the trunk, click a button and it closes itself. So that's one thing that kind of bugged me. So No, that's fair. Another one of my gripes, I promise you we're going to talk about good things about this car because this car is overall very, very good. Uh, proximity sensors. Uh, yeah. When you approach the car, the car opens, like, um, the door handles of the car kind of move out. And yeah. so, like, you just hold on to it and you just open the door. I found that it doesn't work that well for me especially like when you leave and the car is supposed to lock automatically sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't and that's really? one thing i found yeah so that's just like one thing that i found about the car other than that like when it works it's very very good yeah. but it just that's just like one annoying thing about it it also could play a part that i forget to turn off the car and that's why when i walk away from it it doesn't lock automatically yeah uh but that's just like one thing um overall though I think this is a very, very, very good car. Yep, I agree. I mean, like we said, everything works. The build quality is there. The performance is there. The software is almost there. Yeah. Which I wonder if that's something that they can do, kind of like an over-the-air update type of thing. To, which I think they're going to start doing. To that. change a couple things. Yeah, that would be awesome if they could do that. But uh, overall, like Ed said, uh, we're both extremely happy with this car. If you're in the market for an EV, definitely consider the uh, Hyundai Ioniq 6. And uh, yeah. Else? No, I, I think this is a really, really good car. I know that we've like said some things that we don't like about it, but better, way better build quality than Tesla. So oh, I can 100%. so see people coming in and actually buying this car over like a Model 3. Yep. Um, I don't know if you would purchase this over a Model S. I think the price range for a Model S is what, like 70000 Oh, uh, I think it's a little bit less. It's probably about 15000 more than this car. Yeah. So it's, it's a good amount more, but just depends on what what your needs are so and i think once they open it up for this tesla supercharging which hyundai and kia both joined i think it's going to make it easier um and yeah i think that's like pretty much i would give this car like an eight out of ten honestly i think it's a fair grade yeah but the, let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below thank you guys so much for watching we really appreciate the support make sure you give this video a thumbs up we'll see you guys in the next video